The most effective way to flirt and get someone to be obsessed with you is by responding to their advances inconsistently. This can look like for roughly every five messages person one sends, person two replies once. The key is that the responses have to be unpredictable. So it's not after exactly five texts every time. Sometimes it's quicker after one or two, sometimes it's longer after seven or eight. Sounds manipulative? It is. So in this video, we'll talk about why inconsistency will make person one text all the time, why this is absolute poison if you wish to build a relationship that lasts, and what to do instead. If you're new here, my name is Doris. I'm a certified coach with a master's in psychology, and through this channel and in my coaching practice, I help smart romantics build meaningful relationships. First of all, some background on that random flirting technique. The underlying psychological concept is called operant conditioning with a variable ratio schedule. Operant conditioning focuses on the way a behavior is shaped by corresponding rewards or punishments. So person number one's behavior is sending flirty messages and the reward they want is a reply from person number two. Variable ratio implies that rewards or reply texts are given after a random number of behaviors. What makes it so effective is that the unpredictability of the reward keeps person one engaged and motivated to keep doing their thing. We've probably all experienced a version of this and probably from both sides, but what makes this whole thing extra tragic is that if person two has lost interest, stops sending replies and ghosts person one, they may not get the hint and will not stop waiting for another text for a long time. Why? Because rewards have been random before and they're now conditioned to keep trying. So their brain is thinking, I've been texting a lot, a reward is overdue by now, so maybe next time I'll get it. If that reminds you of gambling and casinos, you're right, it's the same principle. So how do we stop getting hooked on these games and start getting the connection we really want? Emotional maturity. My basic definition of emotional maturity is responding to any situation in a way that is appropriate, proportional and responsible. I'm now going to give you a definition and an exercise for each. Appropriate behaviors start with accepting emotions without manipulating. For example, continuing the inconsistent response thing into an established relationship erodes trust and creates a fake power dynamic. Meaningful relationships are not about winning or losing, it's about building mutual respect, trust and understanding. Now the exercise, instead of pretending everything is okay, be open and honest about how you feel. This will create space for the other person to do the same and deepen your connection over time. If you're new to this, you might even say out loud, hey, I'd like to practice sharing what I feel. I think I've been hiding behind a few masks and this might help us actually relate to our real selves and then practice it. Proportional behaviors are about communicating emotions. Mature individuals still feel anger and disappointment, but they're not passive aggressive about it and they don't get into screaming matches. Instead, they express their emotions and needs in a clear and respectful manner. This is also a work in progress, but I dare you to try. So here's an exercise. Practice active listening. This means fully focusing on the other person's words and trying to understand their perspective. Repeat what they say back to them to make sure you understood them correctly. That will also slow your mind down enough so you don't react, but can respond from a more thoughtful place. Finally, emotional maturity is about taking responsibility for our actions. When things get heated, it's easy to blame other people or the weather or your mother. If we remain calm and level-headed, we can approach disagreements in a more productive way rather than reacting impulsively and making the situation worse. So the exercise here is, if you feel yourself getting angry or defensive, take a break. Don't just storm off, literally say, hey, I can't think straight right now, I need a pause. Maybe not a break because breaks can be misunderstood. Let's continue this whenever and then give your partner a time when to continue the conversation and keep that date. This will allow you to approach the situation with a clearer head and a more productive mindset. We've covered a lot already, but I have two more nuggets for you. First, if you're person two for someone right now and you don't see a future, please release them. Send them a text telling them you're no longer interested. It's the kind thing to do. And secondly, if you like this video, I'm pretty sure you're going to like this one on how to get out of relationship ruts as well. I'll see you in the next one.